stay with us. Jen and I were just talking about um, a person we know that I'm not going to name because I don't want to embarrass. Who's just you can tell it's like she's a natural dancer in the way that her body moves and her everything. And I was saying, you know, I I I'm built like a natural dancer. Clearly. Um, I don't know how exactly all of us were made, you know, to do different niche things, but I do know that we were all made to worship. And uh, so, Jenny, why don't you start us off by just reading the scripture, we'll pray, and then we'll go into a time of worship this morning. Yes, uh, good morning. I'm going to read from Psalms 30. I will exalt you, Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not allowed my enemies to triumph over me. Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you healed me. Lord, you brought me up from Sheol and spared me from among those going down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor a lifetime. Weeping may stay overnight, but there is joy in the morning. So, Lord, we just lift up this time of worship. We lift up this whole service to you. Lord, we lay down any of the hindrances that might keep us from doing what we were ultimately created to do, which was that we are made to worship you. Lord, we thank you that you are deserving of our praise. Would you inhabit those praises yes, this morning? It's through your son's name, the whole church said. Amen. Amen. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break, this broken hearts declare his grace. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow.
my story's just begun and failure won't define me cause that's what my father failure won't define me cause that's what my father does oh lay your burdens down oh Check your shame at the door. It ain't welcome anymore. Oh, 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 you're in the Father's house. Rivals not the end.
this is the Father, then what are we to each other? The brothers and sisters who build each other up, who have each other's back, who speak life when somebody is walking in darkness, who tell people the truth, who love them unconditionally, who serve them. Lord, just thank you for this body. And I just pray that each person looks around and sees a person next to them who wants to be the love of Jesus to them. Even if they're new here, Lord, we want to show them that love, Lord, because that speaks about who you are. And, and that's something that our mortal minds can understand, is the love through human beings. So, Lord, we just thank you for this family. We lift you up and praise you in Jesus' name.
time guests with us today there is a orange connection card in the seat back directly in front of you you can take that card out 
fill out as much as you're comfortable with. We'd love for you to put your name and your best phone number. There's a, a QR code on the seat back in front of you, also on screen. That's our digital card. You can scan that card, fill out the orange one, or scan this card. We would really appreciate that. We're going to move into what we call our generous moment here at Bethel. This is where we just celebrate how generous God has been to us and through us. Here at Bethel, we have three easy ways to give. You will see those on screen. We have a giving envelope. We have some gray boxes in the back. If you choose to give cash or check, you can put those in those envelopes, put those in those gray boxes. Thank you guys who have already gone online. Many of you guys do that. Thank you so much for your faithful giving because your giving allows the vision of our church that God has given us to continue to move forward. I'm going to pray, then we're going to jump into our message today. Father, we love you. We thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be like you and to be a giver. Lord, bless my friends who are giving today or who have already given, Lord, throughout the week. In Jesus' name, amen. Easter, we started this series where we're walking through the book of Acts. We started with Acts chapter 1. Today, we're going to be in Acts chapter 2. But before we do that, you know, here at Bethel, we have what we call our discipleship journey. This is different things that you can be a part of here at our church to help you plug into the life of our church, but also grow in your relationship with Jesus. And one of the things on the, or one of the steps on the journey is called water baptism. And so April the 28th, if you have recently given your life to Christ, rededicated your life, or you want to take this step to get water baptized, all we need to do, all, all you need to do is sign up to let us know. Again, scan the QR code or take that connection card, put your name, your best phone, and that will register you for baptism coming up April 28th. Also, that same day, April 28th, we're going to have baby dedications here at the church. So if you want to have your baby dedicated to the Lord, we see this in Scripture. We just need to know. Scan the QR code, sign up, or use that connection card. Acts chapter 2. Last week, we started in Acts 1, and we talked about from Acts chapter 1, the ascension. And I encourage you, if you miss any message, you can always go to our Facebook page, and you can listen to the message the week before. And today, we're going to jump into Acts chapter 2. But before we read those verses, I think there's something that we all have in common today. There's a problem that all of us can relate to. I bet if I had a conversation with you and I asked you about your weekly schedule or your daily schedule, I'm sure it would be full of things like this. Kids activities, grocery shopping, people you need to meet with, work responsibilities, church responsibilities, and many, many more Things. Sometimes when I listen to myself communicate all that has to be done, I exhaust myself just talking about it. Because life and life's responsibilities has a way at depleting us, doesn't it? Tiring us out, running us down. I think some of us might even say today, I feel like my tank is running on empty. Some of us might say, I feel like I don't have much more to give. I feel spent. This is a real feeling. A lot of us experience, and we experience it at different stages in our life. So what does a Christian do? What does a disciple, what does a follower of Christ do when they feel like this? Do we just quit? Do we give up? Do we back away from some things? Or is there another way? Is there something God offers us to take and strengthen us when we feel weak, can encourage us when we feel discouraged or like giving up, that can empower us when chaos and confusion is hitting our life. Is there something from God? 
that gives us divine wisdom when we do not know what to do. Good news today. Acts chapter 2. We find some followers of Jesus that completely understand how many of us feel today. Because the same problem we oftentimes have, guess what? They had as well. When we jump here into Acts chapter 2, we find men and women who are discouraged, who are frustrated, who are worn out, who are confused, and who are pretty fearful of what is to come. Remember, they just watched their great leader drift away into the sky, not really sure if he's going to return, not really sure if they can believe what he said was going to happen. All he told them was, I want you to wait from power from on high. They had no clue what they were waiting for. They had no clue what this power was, what it was going to look like. All they knew is this is what our leader told us to do. I'm going to have Jenna come up. Come on up here, Jenna. Jenna's going to read our verses for us today. Give Jenna a big hand clap. <laughs> NIV, NIV, Acts chapter 2, NIV, verses 1 through 13. Here we go. Good morning. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Ele Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked mm. one another, what yeah. does this mean? Yeah. Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much <laughs> wine. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you so much, Lord, for this promise, Lord, that we have in Holy Spirit. Minister yourself to us this morning, Spirit of God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, here we have men and women discouraged, worn out, confused, frustrated, not really knowing what's happened to their leader, not knowing if he's going to return. All they knew is see, he told them, I want you to wait for power from on high. So what did they do? What did these men and women do, confused and frustrated? They did what we probably would have done. They went into hiding. But somehow, or something drastically changed on this day that's recorded in Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, where this small band of men and women suddenly became one of the most powerful forces in the Roman Empire. And Acts 2 is the starting point of all of this. How did this happen? What came upon them because whatever happened to them I when I read that I say to myself I want some of that in my life amen what's so amazing about this this change was not in their own strength something or better said someone from the outside came on the inside of them empowering them in the most difficult times we could ever imagine they began to burn but they were not burning out they were set aflame, but they were not flaming out. They were running for Jesus, but not tiring out. It's all because the Holy Spirit had been poured in them in a way that had been prophesied by Joel 765 years before this day, the day of Pentecost. Verse 1 tells us, when the day of Pentecost came, meaning there already was a Pentecost. This was already a special day. Have you ever read this and asked this question? Why did God choose to send Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost? That's a great question. Why did he choose this day? Out of all the days Holy Spirit could have been poured out, why did he choose 
Pentecost. See, answering this is going to help us understand Holy Spirit and how He impacts our life. This day was a specific day. And on this way, they had a specific way. Sorry about that. The Jews celebrated Pentecost. This celebration was called the Feast of the First Fruits. It included music. It included dancing. And what they would do on this day is they would recount the difficulties they had getting to the promised land that God had provided for them. Here's something we need to know. Getting to what God has for you, getting to your promised land will always be difficult. It's never easy. So what they would do is they would read Deuteronomy 26, 5 through 11. We're not going to read that today. You can do that on your own. And this, these verses spoke about their hardship, but it also spoke about what was on their mind. They would think about this promise this land flowing with milk and honey. And this thought, it would give them strength to endure. This ceremony would conclude with giving a thanks to God and bringing their baskets to God. And what they would do is they would eat a taste of the first fruits while thanking God for His provision. Now, this is important. They would just eat a taste of the first fruits. They would get a taste just a bite, just a nibble, just a taste. And that taste was a taste of what was to come. It was a taste of the harvest that was on its way. What was God saying by sending Holy Spirit at the exact time of the tasting of the first fruits? See, here's something we all know about ourselves. And looking at things that we build. All things become worn out. All things and all people, we don't like this, but it happens, get older. Which points to all things are subject to decay. When you read the book of Romans, this is what Romans speaks about. Because of sin, we all have to deal with decay. We all look great today, but someday, bad news, that's going to change. We all feel great today. Bad news, though. Someday that is going to change. Our bodies are slowly decaying. I know, not a great thought on a Sunday morning. Thanks, Pastor Lance. But because of the decay, we all have to what? Deal with loss. Loss of body strength. Loss of eyesight. Loss of hair. Loss of speed. Loss of life. Because of sin, we have to deal with death and the many difficulties this brings. Romans talks all about this. But not only does it focus on the decay, Romans also speaks about a day when everything, when all of this is going to change, where death and decay are no more, where sickness and disease do not exist. A day when everything that is wrong, good news, will be made right. Oh, we look forward to this day, a day without the presence of sin. A day without unrighteousness. A day without disobedience. What a glorious day this will be. Friends, this day is coming where the entire universe will be delivered from this bondage and its de decomposition. Creation, Romans talks about, groans for this day, yearns for this day. I believe we get so caught up in life. We get so caught up with the, our problems and our difficulties. We forget this day is coming. But facing hardship, facing the pains of life, you know what it should do? It should cause us to long for this day. Let me tell you something. When I go pray for a child who is terminally ill, I think about this day. And I make statements like this, Maranatha, that word means, oh, Lord, come. When I see evil destroying families and the most vulnerable, I call out to Jesus for this day. Lord, come back and rescue us someday. The air of heaven is going to come down and liberate us from death and destruction. After talking about all of this, Paul, who wrote Romans, says something that's going to change our life. He's going to change the way we think about our pain, think about suffering, think about when we ask the why questions of life. Why is this happening? This is one of the reasons we need a relationship with Holy Spirit. In Romans 8, 22, he makes this statement. He says, we know, we know this, meaning we can know this is true. 
that this is something we can stand on in the terrible times of life. This is the comfort Holy Spirit brings. He says, we know this. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to present time, right now. Not only so, but we ourselves, here we go, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly, long for inwardly, as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope, we were saved. See, Holy Spirit, when he comes inside of us, the first thing, the first thing he wants to point out to us is the presence of the future. This is what he brings. Holy Spirit brings the presence of the future. He brings what is on its way, what's coming. This is one of Holy Spirit's responsibilities. See, Holy Spirit, hear me clearly, is a taste. He's a real taste, but he's a taste. You ever had a slice of pie before? Best chocolate pie, praise the Lord. You ever had a slice of pie? Why do you go for the second piece? Because you know the whole is better than what? The slice. It's why you always go back for another piece. Holy Spirit, he's a slice. Now, he's a real slice, let me tell you. But he's a slice. The whole is on its way. Friends, if he is this good, If a relationship with him is this good, how much more when we get a taste of the whole? When the whole of the life and the power and the joy of God's kingdom, when it is fully here, when this day comes, when the whole comes, we're going to stand before Jesus face to face. But here's the good news. But even now, Holy Spirit gives us the capability to experience his presence right now to hear his voice to speak to him for him to speak to us through his living word even now we get a taste of what it is like to be face to face with the king of kings and the lord of lords when the whole comes when this day fully comes we're going to be transformed we're going to be given a new body and be just like him but even now even today you know what holy spirit does he sanctifies us He sets us apart. He delivers us from the works of the flesh. And he makes statements like this to you and I, 1 John 4, 17. As he is, as Jesus is, so am I in this world. (laughs) Holy Spirit's goal is to conform us into the image of Jesus. So I can think like him. So I can act like him. So I can live pure like him. Is holiness and purity possible? You better believe it because of the Holy Spirit. So I can love like him. So I can have his wisdom. So I can have self-control like Jesus. See, Holy Spirit releases these characteristics into our life far beyond what we can ever ask, what we can ever seek. He does this many times without us even asking him to do it. Why? Because he has work for us to do. Do you know that? Holy Spirit has work for us to do. There is a mission for you and I to fulfill. Holy Spirit is the first fruits of what's to come. He brings us into the presence of the future. Power awaits us. Glory awaits us. Goodness awaits us. But a taste of this, friends, we can experience right now through Holy Spirit. Let's give God a hand clap to that. Woo! See, Acts 2 records what happened when he came. Did you remember what you read? Supernatural things began to happen. Things people had never seen before started to happen. So much so, they looked at the disciples and said, they must be drunk. (laughs) These people must have had too much wine. Why would statements like this be made? It could have been because the joy of the Lord came upon them. I don't know if you've ever seen the joy of the Lord through the Holy Spirit come upon somebody, but it looks like they're a little bit drunk. But it's the joy of the Lord, something that overwhelms them. It's not weird, it's authentic. Something overwhelms them and fills them. It's the joy that what Jesus has done in their life. Maybe that was what was happening. Maybe it could have been 
because they realized what was prophesied was coming to pass from the prophet Joel. A day would come when Holy Spirit would be poured out, that people would prophesy, see visions, dream dreams. People were calling on Jesus to be saved. It could have been because believers were operating and moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Again, some were moving in prophecy, some were preaching, some were speaking in tongues, others had the interpretation of tongues. A move of the Spirit like this had never been witnessed before. What did it do? It drew many. Many wanted to see more and find out what all of this meant. Others were afraid. Others said, I don't want any of this in my life. What's so interesting about this is we see the same reaction to Holy Spirit even today. When Holy Spirit starts to move, there will be many that want to know more about him so they can experience him the way the first followers of Christ experience him. Others will say, this is not how I grew up. <laughs> I was never taught this. This is not how I grew up. This looks weird, and they walk away. You know what I'm thankful for? I am so thankful that God did not allow me to walk away when I was first introduced to Holy Spirit. Friends, I grew up in a traditional church. Nothing like this was ever taught in the church I grew up in. It's sad. Because as we clearly see from Scripture, Holy Spirit is from Jesus. And the teaching of who He is and what He wants to do in our life is straight from God's Word. Was it different for me? Of course it was. But you know what I saw? You know what I saw? I saw authenticity. I saw people who were authentic, moving in the power of the Holy Spirit, and it changed my life. Most of you know about the first time. You've heard this story, but for those who have not, I'm going to tell it to you today. About the first time I was ever prophesied over. I never heard about the gift of prophecy. I never taught about the gift of prophecy. I, wouldn't talk about, I was never taught about having a relationship with Holy Spirit. So the first time I encountered this, I was in a setting just like this. And there was a man who came to speak at our church, and he called me out of the crowd. He pointed to me and called me up. Now, what nobody knew in that room is that there was someone that I thought I was going to marry, and that person ended up breaking up with me. I was devastated. I was discouraged. I had lost my confidence. This is before I got right with Jesus. But here I am in this room, and he calls me up, and the first word he says, the very first words out of his mouth was, you have been in a relationship, and that relationship did not go the way you thought, and you have lost your confidence. My mouth hit the floor. I was like, what is going on? Because nobody knew. But the Spirit of God knew. The Holy Spirit knew. And that day he said, God, through his Spirit, is restoring your confidence. I want you to pick your confidence back up. And God restored my confidence. I was encouraged that day. I'll never forget the last thing he told me. He said, the Lord is burying this relationship. He said, you can take your shovel and go dig it up. He said, but it will never be of Jesus. Thank God that I obeyed <laughs> the man of God that day and listened to that prophecy. See, what did I walk away knowing from God moving through by his spirit in some way. I walked away thinking, knowing God knows me. God knows what I'm going through. He sees me. This stuff is real. Friends, Holy Spirit knows you. He knows what you're going through. And we should all desire a greater relationship with him. See, here's what we can't miss in Acts 2. And really this whole book. Because we have the first fruit, we have the power of from Holy Spirit, hear me, to push back the stem of decay. Because we have been given the gifts of Holy Spirit, we have the power to push back against the spiritual forces of darkness in our life and in others. Think about it. What did the gift of prophecy do in my life that day? You know what it did? It pushed back against the immoral soul ties I had in my life. It pushed back against the unforgiveness in my heart, things that were not healthy for me, physically and spiritually. These things were destroying me. They were decaying me. They were eating away at me. But Holy Spirit, he used another human being to change all of this. Holy Spirit showed me, I don't have to live like this, that there is a better way. I got to experience the power of spiritual gifts activated in a healthy environment. My exposure, my testimony about Holy Spirit and His gifts, friends, has always been healthy. 
It's always been in a healthy environment. Now listen, I know some of us don't have this story. Some of you have been told weird and strange things by others, saying, God told me to tell you this. If that was you, I am sorry. But here's my encouragement. Don't allow some weird person to hold you back from all that God has for you. We at Bethel, we make sure this is walked in in a healthy way. Here's why. The reason why we are so careful about this is because Holy Spirit does not just bring us into the presence of the future, of what's to come, but he also brings us into the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. In Acts 2, when Holy Spirit came, what did you hear? What did you see? Wind. Sound like a rushing, mighty wind. You heard wind. You saw fire. When you look throughout the Old Testament, every time God would show up, you know what you would see? Wind and fire. To Job, you saw a whirlwind. To Abraham, you saw a burning torch. On Mount Sinai, you had thunder and lightning. You had wind. You had fire. Hear me now. Moving in the gifts of the Spirit, which we believe here at Bethel are for all believers, because these gifts are important to advancing God's kingdom. But we have to handle those gifts appropriately. Why? Because they are fire. The gifts of the Spirit are fire. The gifts coming through us can bear a lot of fruit in someone's life, or they have the potential to do a lot of damage in someone's life. Fire not handled appropriately, you know what it does? It burns people. Words coming from a human's mouth does not match up with God's Word. Sorry about that. Sorry, Pastor Ron. Harms people. When what people say don't match up with God's word, it harms people. For example, ever heard this before? If you just sow a seed, if you just give some money, God's plan will be released in your life. Friends, that's harmful. That is very harmful. You ever heard this? If you just have enough faith, if you just believe enough, you will be healed. That's very harmful. You ever heard this? If you don't speak in tongues, you're not filled with Holy Spirit. That's harmful. Those statements do not line up with God's Word. See, friends, we don't treat the presence of the Lord like this. God does not like His name being used for nonsense. God told me if you give more money, your life will get better. That's nonsense. God told me I need to leave my spouse. Nonsense. God told me that marriage can be whatever I want it to be. Nonsense. Friends, whatever Holy Spirit says, God's Word always says. says. At Bethel, we want to move in the gifts of the Spirit. But we want to do it in a way that blesses people, that doesn't harm people. For example, if you have something encouraging, you feel like the Lord has an encouraging word to share with others, you know what you do? You grab a leader a Bethel. You say, hey, I have an encouraging word, I believe, to say to this person. Will you come along with me? Because here's the thing. We could be off. And you need somebody there beside you to say, hey, that wasn't Jesus. You were off there. That's a healthy environment where the Holy Spirit acts, can activate freely through you and I as followers of Christ. Where words can be judged. See, here's what's at stake. This is why Holy Spirit wants to fill us. He wants to operate through a healthy environment. Because people's lives are at stake. Holy Spirit wants to use us to minister, to encourage. But we have to do it the way. We have to operate in a place that's healthy according to this word. Pastor Ron, you come on up. This is why we ask for the fear of the Lord. Lord, help me. I pray this every time I stand up to speak. Because in a sense, I am prophetically speaking to you as I communicate God's word. So we have to ask for the fear of the Lord. Lord, help me. Help me communicate your heart. God has called us to reach people. He's called us not to move past them, not to push them further away from Jesus or to push them further away from his church. Acts chapter 2, as we continue to read those verses, you know what you saw? gathered that day, the day of Pentecost. Did you notice all the different nations that were gathered there that day? Luke 
named about 16 different nations that day. I mean, he could have stopped with this just four. We would have got the point, right? But he kept going nation after nation after nation. Friends, God loves the nations. Here at Bethel, it's something we pray about over and over and over again. God, bring the nations. God, bring different ethnicities. Fill this place with African Americans. Fill this place with with Hispanics. Fill this place with Asians. Fill this place with the white folk. Fill it, Lord. So that nations, because this is what Holy Spirit is about. He brings you and I into the presence of the future. He brings us into the presence of the Lord. But here's the last one. We can't miss this. Because this gifts and all the things he wants to do, it's not just for us. It's for others. And he brings us into the presence of the nations. Of the nations. Bethel, friends, we are called to the nations. I'm thankful for Clarksville, thankful for Fort Campbell. But our reach is a lot more than just that. It's the nations. That's our call. And we need the power and the wisdom of Holy Spirit to reach and minister to the nations. This is why we need to ask Holy Spirit to fill us. As you read your Bibles, what you find out is the disciples were continually filled with Holy Spirit. Meaning it's not just a one-time thing. Now, don't get me wrong. When Holy Spirit comes, the fullness comes. And it's not like he gets depleted like a gas tank. That's, that's not healthy biblical teaching. But yet, experiencing him, encountering him, fresh wind, fresh fire. The Bible calls it rivers of living water, which we can experience on a daily basis. I don't know where you are when it comes to this. This may be the first time you've ever heard about Holy Spirit. Ever heard good teaching on Holy Spirit. My encouragement to you, if you say, you know what, Pastor Lance, man, that was good, but I still have some questions. That's all right. God's not afraid of your questions, and we're not afraid of your questions. There's a great book by Robert Morris. It's called The God I Never Knew. Robert Morris is probably like a lot of us. Grew up not really hearing much about this. This is a great Bible teacher. He has an amazing church called Gateway Church in Dallas. Big old church. He was a man who actually struggled with believing Holy Spirit in his gifts. But then as he began to grow in his understanding of the Word, he couldn't resist what the Word had to teach him. It's called the God I Never Knew, talking about having a relationship with Holy Spirit. Some of us here today, we believe these things. We know they're true. But yet you just haven't activated them or walked in them in a while now. I want to pray for us today. I want to pray that God fills us afresh this morning. Amen? That fresh wind, that fresh fire would come. We need it because, again, how do we start this message? Some of us feel spent today. Some of us feel depleted today. Some of us feel like I can't continue on. You need Holy Spirit. You need Him to fill you afresh, to strengthen you in a new way today. Let's stand to our feet. Sergio, come on up, champ. I want Sergio to pray for us today. Our prayer team can come on down front. We're going to have people down front here. And Sergio, as he as he prays here and says a little something here, you can come down front. And you can allow these men and these women to pray for you as we lean into Holy Spirit this morning. Pastor, I want a microphone to
He says, you being an evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? ask? If you got to ask, he ain't automatic, right? So if you'd be humble today, maybe you haven't even been living right. Maybe, maybe there's, there's a stirring in your spirit, a conviction in your heart. That's good. Yeah. I'd say we repent right now, yeah. whatever it is. Just, yeah, God, Lord. forgive me, Lord. I haven't lived this thing right. I haven't uh, walked this thing out. I haven't treated people the way I needed to be treated. I haven't responded with my life the way I need to respond. Father, I repent. Yes. And release it to him. Amen? Amen. And today, if you would be holy, if you would be humble, sorry, humble, you would say, Father, right now, speak it out. Say, Father. Father. Give me Holy Spirit. Give Baptize me, Holy Spirit. me in Holy Baptize Spirit right now. Fill me up with a fresh fire. Yes, Lord. Fill me up. Give me a prayer language. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, right now and fill them up. Fill them up. Fill them up right now. Remove everything that doesn't belong. Every hindrance, every unclean spirit, yes, everything, Jesus, Jesus every thanks. lie of the enemy that you have come to believe, that you are not worthy, that you are not this, that you are not that. He has made you worthy. Receive right now in the name of Jesus. Fill them up, Lord. Give them their prayer language even right yes, now. Lord. Father, draw them to the front, Lord. Yes, draw them to Jesus. the front. Come to the front if you want the fresh fire, if you want that feeling, if you've never been baptized by the Holy Spirit before, come to the front and he will fill you. Come, even yes, if you're sitting Jesus. in your seat and you ask him, God is faithful. Yes. And he will touch you. Every, every infirmity in your body be healed yes, in the name Jesus, of Jesus. Thanks. Every cell that is not of, that is cancerous, every, yes, let it Jesus, dissipate thanks. right now in Jesus' name. Every uh, torment of the mind, all the depression, all the um, anxiety, all the self-harm, yes. go in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Every doubt, every wall of pride that's up right now that is blocking you from coming forward, from receiving, I'll bind you in the name of Jesus, and we call you null and void. Yes, Lord. Amen. Father, baptize them with your spirit. Fresh Fill Jesus. them with your love, Lord. Let them feel an encounter with you right now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to speak against something. Some of you guys are hearing the spirit of death talk to you. And somehow the enemy has lied to you. You think it's Jesus saying, take your life. That is not Holy Spirit. That is not Jesus. God, right now we drive out the spirit of death and darkness. Lord, thoughts of suicide, we resist you in the name of Jesus. We resist you over every person in this room. Listen to me, as a parent right now, your kid might not even be in this room, but you may be struggling. You may think your child has had those thoughts. We pray against that right now in the name of Jesus. God, for our children, the spirit of death, you have no place in Jesus' name. God, we rebuke you. We cancel your assignment against our children in Jesus' name. And we declare life. We declare Holy Spirit power, Lord, upon our babies, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's just give God a big hand clap today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen to me. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's from Holy Spirit. Our prayer team, Sergio, our prayer team is going to be standing down. You want something else? Go word, ahead, Chad. I got a go, word for go. that young man over there. Go. That was, I don't know what your name is. What's your name? David, man, I was always standing over there. Um, the Lord really highlighted you. He said there's a great call in your life. There's a great call for you to lead many to the Lord. Um, he's made you a voice, and he's given you a purpose. He's called you to be an evangelist an evangelist of your community, an evangelist to the nations. He's put a great heart on you, man. And he's called you up and out. And there's been a lot of stuff that's been pressing you here lately, a lot of a lot of doubt in your mind. Uh, you, you almost like feel unworthy and feel like, man, I'm not good, good enough. Man, he calls you good. 
in the name of Jesus, he's called you good. Because he pulled you out of the crowd and highlighted you. Amen? He absolutely loves you. You're a son. And you are blessed for the family that you have. Man, you have a lot of people praying for you. You have a lot of intercessors in your life. There is a legacy that you're going to leave someday. Amen? Go pray for you real quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this young man. Yes, Lord. Father, I thank you for the calling on his life, Lord. Father, I thank you yes. that you have highlighted him, Lord, that you did not let him go unnoticed, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, Good. there's been a seeking. There's been a seeking in his heart. There's been a lot of trying to understand. Father, I thank you that you're going to settle things yes. in his heart. You're going to settle things in his life, Jesus Lord. Name. Father, you're going to cause him to be filled with great joy, Father, and anoint him with your fire in Jesus' yes, name. Yes, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Got you. Guys, our prayer team will be standing down front. We believe here at Bethel in the power of prayer. Don't forget rushes tonight. We do something we call First Step. I'll be in the Global Cafe. Love to meet and greet you as you go. If you have a connection card you'd like to give, you can place it in that gray box as you leave today. You are dismissed. Thank you, guys.